check this out. Good to see in, uh, the, in the virtual training environment. Um, I did want to, re to, to allow people into the it's town at this time because there are lots of ongoing stuff and I was a bit scared. Oh, look at him sitting there looking all casual. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> let, me, let me get my laser point out and uh, we can scout. Uh, for, for people with low FPS, it might actually be a bit difficult to see the laser pointer, so I'm sorry about that. At least um, we'll see what I think. Uh, so we'll just bring my pointer close to the board here. Yeah. And, uh, all right. Um, and I, I'm going to zoom, zoom, zoom through this, so please, please bear, bear with me. Um, uh, Joyce, could you focus on, on, on the screen? Or should I do that? I, I can do that. Okay, that's... No, I, I think you better just ju just move around the, the place. Okay. Okay. Um, so what you have here is, um, you know... Um, okay, let's go next to the next slide. I mean, for people who are interested to have, uh, you know, to, to know where, what... What project the Play to Train falls under? This is the Idaho Bioterrorism Awareness and Preparedness Program. It's it's a very big project that encompasses the range of distance learning and simulation technologies. So uh, Second Life is only part of it, and uh, and we are looking at using Second Life for you know uh, as a table uh, as as a you know virtual tabletop exercise platform. Um, and we see Namro here coming up the board. Um, he's a medical librarian. Um, okay, so you've seen that slide already. I'm just going to go and skip all the unnecessary ones. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, what when we proposed this project, what we we're trying to do is try to augment the existing distance learning uh, infrastructure of ISU and look at other other things that we can do and. Uh, and we thought Second Life would be one of the things that would expand the other things that's currently available, like the traditional learning management systems, etc. It might actually appear quite amazing that I'm using the word traditional to refer to learning management system. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, um, I think that it's, we, we, we are in a transition phase, but I'm not going to go down that route. Uh, there'll be in the future where people will be merging learning management systems with virtual environments and so on and so forth, but we don't have time to actually talk about the details of this in, uh, in this talk. Um, that's another technology that we've recently introduced uh, uh, as well. It's, uh, you know, the traditional desktop web conferencing systems. And, and, and people uh, who are actually in real life here have, have got a CD. Um, oh, who is Emmanuel calling me? Uh, OK, I don't know. All right. Um, there is a CD in your packet, and if you actually look at the various at the contents of the CD, you'll find a lot of recordings about, uh, you know, about the the the, the series that that, uh, that that we've used. Um, um, I mean, the various technologies that we've used. And please have a look at, at the CD. And based on my experience, and if I go by the stats of how many people actually do things. Out of maybe 25, I guess maybe one must have done it. So please go home and have a look at the city. Um, the the next slide is about uh, you know um, how we plan to integrate uh, high fidelity mannequins in 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 IBAP, in the IBAP project. And we have we have actually the CIMAN that we are that's already being used at ASU, and we are going to, to integrate this in our current IBAP offerings. And uh, and we are also going to show examples how these very mannequins can be translated into Second Life. Um, uh, in this slide, I'm just trying to show you know, a snapshot of things that's cu currently ongoing at ISU. You have uh, Beverly uh, Hewitt uh, giving a demo of of, of the sim man here. We have the sim baby, and then we can have like smallpox modules that gets overlaid on on on, on the sim man to simulate various. Um, you know, uh, disease conditions, etc., which is related to bioterrorism. And this one is, uh, you know, just a picture of a cement frothing, uh, trying to stimulate nuclear, biological, chemical, you know, effects on the body. Um, and 
Let's look at the next slide. The next slide is simply showing you know the various activities that's going on under the IFBAP project here, and uh, this this scenario is actually a video that's on your uh, web, uh, play. Well, it's available on the IFBAP website. We actually gave a live demo to a real you know audience in in Boise, and we had a mannequin who actually collapsed from a heart attack, and and the EMS people had to move in and. And, uh, and and uh, and and do the the, uh, the procedure. Okay, that's the ambulance that uh, uh, the College of Technology has purchased, and we've provided you know uh, some of the funding for that. And uh, the ambulance also carries one of those mannequins. You know, it carries them uh, wherever training is needed. So you have training at point of need. Um, this is another aspect of the project where we're also looking at developing uh, online simulations of medical devices. And uh, what do you do with this is you can, uh, if you want to train, uh, you know, uh, nurses to uh, to use certain devices, they can just go on a website and interact with an online uh, uh, with an online device and learn the ins and outs of the device and etc. Okay. Um, okay. Now uh, about our activities in Second Life, um, we actually started um, maybe. About a year ago, uh, we started with one of those free uh, slot of uh, one of the free plots of land that was given to us um, by Pathfinder, and uh, and so we actually did a little, you know, uh, in Second Life's time, maybe we are like ancients. Um, well, sorry, I mean, I know there are people who are much older than me here, but. I mean, you know, but I'm, I'm just, you know, um, just to say that we've spent some time here, maybe about, about a year. And what you see here is one of the helicopters that we were playing around when, when we first get in. And this is one, uh, a rescue helicopter that was made by one of the um, people in Second Life itself. Um, okay. Um, so why, why are we uh, here? Um, we are going to talk a bit about, uh, there are a lot of things that we plan to, to train, you have, you know, as I mentioned, SNS uh, start and ICS training, and uh, and I'll try to work with examples, you know, uh, as I finish my set of slides. I don't like slides too much because it kind of constrains me, but put some order as well in my in my in my talk. So um, here in this slide, what you see is I wanted to to show you how you can actually translate, you know, real world. Uh, Simulations, uh, you know, like like those plates that usually get overlaid onto a real-world mannequin, like the same man. We can do pretty much the same thing in Second Life. We can actually overlay an AV with uh, with those plates, those virtual plates, except that the textures can change. I mean, so you have like a dynamic situation. And on the Play to Train website, you will also see, you know, the the, the skin condition. Uh, changing. There's a video showing that, and, uh, and that, that, that's the interesting part. Another example. Um, okay, that was that, that's just a picture of, of showing you the various stages that that somebody will, with smallpox goes through. Uh, you can see the pimples growing and bursting and all that. Um, but but I chose smallpox just as an example again because there's, we can we can just extrapolate the same idea and dive in and, and do many many more things. Uh, this is another example where I was trying to look at, let's find uh, a real-world uh, simulation like the Sinman, and it's the LSAT, it's a lung sound auscultation trainer. And what we did is we just did a linear translation and built a, a virtual mannequin, okay, a virtual mannequin. So you have the virtual mannequin here, and uh, people can just click various parts of the body and, have, and listen to various lung sounds. Uh, you know, uh, based on whatever conditions you want to simulate. So this is me here sitting there, and this is Josh. Um, Amy uh, helped us implement this mannequin. Okay, 